Whenever Leonard fights, he's the hometown boy, even if there's a real hometown boy going against him. The moment the camera set its lens on him, the world knew he was something special. Between the Wheaties box look, the carefully crafted public image, and of course the brilliance of his boxing, Ray Leonard was born to be a superstar. He's fighting with the utmost what I call clarity. He sees everything, he's quick at everything. He's a great fighter at the peak of his career. His big bang came in the 1976 Olympics. gold medal in Montreal and his outlandish speed immediately made him matter. Ray went to war with a generation of kings. And almost always seemed to come out on top. But this isn't another one of those videos. Today, we take a look at some of the deeper cuts on Sugar Ray's hit parade. Let's look back at what happens when the fastest welterweight of all time is faced with the mere mortals of his era. Our first victim is Augustin Estrada of Mexico. Estrada was an awkward pressure fighter who tried to take the fight to Sugar Ray. Ray used his speed to light up the insistent Mexican. Sugar Ray is yet to go eight rounds. Sugar Ray now with the first. But when Estrada's chin proved up to Ray's punch, Ray switched targets. Estrada that he won. But Estrada was not hurt. There was nothing sweet about what Ray did to Estrada's midsection. He just got in a left, and a left and a right to chug a right. Ray drops him with a left to the body at the end of the fifth. fifth round. Oh! He got him into the midsection, and suddenly Estrada went... And absolutely destroys him one round later. We check back just a year later. Ray had racked up 12 more wins and stopped half those men. Johnny Gant, at 29 years old, was a veteran of nearly 70 fights. Gant had seen it all as a fighter. That's a grazing follow-up punch there. Good one too by Leonard. Gant saw it all except for the source of Sugar Ray's punches. He only saw them as they were coming back. In round six of a landslide on the cards, Gant decides to try and make a stand. Ray lights him up. The ones Gan didn't see hurt worst of all. Just take him away. Take him away. 
well. Again in the second round. And raked him a few times after that. Less than a minute to go in the round. They did not land. That left hand foot can't push on the jaw as he was trying to in trouble. At the end of the eighth round, after a vicious beating, Gant's mouthpiece falls out. Ray Leonard opens up and posts the most violent finishing sequence this side of Sub-Zero, tearing Gant's mouth to shreds on the stoppage. A scant few months later, and it looks like Sugar Ray's style was losing its sweetness. As I pointed out in that earlier interview, Sugar Ray has always had success against Southpaws and not necessarily fighting aggressive. More and more, Ray was choosing to stand his ground. It was against Tony Chiaverini, a swarming Southpaw in a small ring where Ray proved his power once more. Sugar Ray couldn't miss. Right, you saw it to the left jaw of Cheverini. And Sugar Ray is giving it to Cheverini all over the ring in this second round. A growing fighter who wants to prove that he is verging upon greatness. While his counterpunching stole the show. To that more later. Again, Sugar Ray counterpunching brilliantly as he said he would. Cheverini clearly was trying to butt Sugar Ray. You saw that left. As the elbow can be too. And then earlier, again the lefts and the rights into the midsection. And still Leonard's in the corner. He finally pushed him off. And then he postured, we'll take a station break. Now Leonard, having pushed himself, will push Cheverini off of him. Gotten out to ring center, is once again giving it Sugar Ray closed it with a one-man fireworks display. We'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this. Tony couldn't come out for the fifth. Severini could not come out for the fifth round. Everything that Sugar Ray Leonard told me in the pre-fight interview earlier in this telecast has taken root. Now there's Benitez to look forward to. Will you find anyone before him? I'm quite sure I have at least two more fights before I meet Wilfredo Benitez. And just like I said once before, no problem. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. And don't get cocky. <laughs> just six weeks later, against Pete Ranzani, Ray Leonard was less of a fireworks display and more of a firing squad. Early going in this round. was by Leonard. A hard, hard right hand of the rib cage by Leonard. That one was Ray Leonard's explosive hand speed riddled Ranzani with too much, too fast. Right hand just missed Sugar Ray so far in the fight because Ranzani has been coming right through him. Left hook caught Ranzani going back. White puppy and they put some cream over the left eye. Good left hand by Sugar Row and now In the fourth, Ray gets Ranzani to the ropes and hits him with everything on the move list. Just hanging on. The sentence of punches, 
punctuated with an exclamation point of a left hook. At 48 seconds to go in the fourth round, it may be over. It should be over. Ranzani rose like a soul ready to leave its body. Ray put him away. NBAF welterweight champion, Sugar Ray Leonard. And now they will put the first belt ever as a professional fighter on Sugar Ray Leonard. Six weeks after that fight, Ray took on Andy Price. They tell us that this has been the hottest ticket in the history of the strip, and why not? It figures to be a dynamite night of boxing. Ray was usually something of a slow starter. As I said, 23. Ten-point must system of scoring. There was always a feeling that despite his finishing rate, he was taking his sweet time putting opponents away. The scoring, scoring by three judges. I'll be Shirley, jump on it, and then the right. Ray Leonard like Michael Jordan, took that personally. He took it out on Andy Price. Ray put a hook in his cheek, and Andy froze for a moment. With Sugar's speed, there wasn't a moment to be had. first, Howard. I have to take care of Wilfredo Benitez. In fact, I'm motivated so highly. I like to say hello to the people back home at Palmer Park because you have really motivated me because I'm going to bring the title back to Washington, D.C. And like you told me once before, don't get cocky. <laughs> Ray didn't need sign language to make a statement with his hands. Ray rockets to the top of the rankings, stopping the slippery Wilfred Benitez. then throwing the meanest left hook of his life against Dave Green. We rejoin Ray Leonard after getting his revenge on Roberto Duran. Ray regains his welterweight title, but now Leonard was looking to move up and wait. Larry Bonds was Leonard's last title defense at welterweight. You know, I use left hand a lot more than people, you know, in the boxing game. Everything is always turned around. I hate fighting in southpaws, left-handers, because it, they create a problem. They're unorthodox, and especially with uh, Larry Bonds' height and reach advantage, uh, it's going to take a little time to figure him out. Unless he wants to be hit nice and cooperate. Larry was looked at as a tune-up for an upcoming fight with the 154-pound champion. And if he shows well against the champion, I would think more fights will follow. Leonard now pressing the... Larry was a slick left-hander who liked to mix it up. For the first few rounds, Larry's awkward southpaw style gave Leonard trouble. And again, Leonard comes back with a left hand, and the right hand follow misses. Like a gym workout. Stalking bombs right over our microphone. This is what he has to do right here. He has to be first. Ray found the key to unlocking the lefty with his lead right hand. The fighters way off the ropes, can't do it. Two lefts and a right score for Sugar Ray Leonard again. In round four, Ray decides to stand his ground. He drops bonds like the stock market. 
I think he's kind of surprised right now, too, what's keeping this guy up. And that came on the heels of a pretty good job by Larry Bonds. Another Ray one. goes for the finish in the sixth and runs into a nasty pair of punches from Bonds. But it was only a matter of time before Sugar Ray goes to the body before upstairs to finish him. Right hand right to the nose of Larry Bonds and a left and a right, two punches, solidly score on Bonds and another right hand to the face. Bonds tries to get out of trouble along the ropes, takes another right hand, spins away, legs wildly, combination against scores by the champion. He swollen eye. Well, he has Bonds' hands down around his waist. Bonds tries to fight back. Bonds is hurt now, doubles up in the corner. Combinations down goes Bonds, Leonard hands over his head, and I don't know if Bonds is gonna get up from this one. And we will continue, but Bonds is hurt, no question about it. No, you can't shake. Coming up on 15 seconds in the round, Leonard is trying to put his man away, hammering Bonds. Arthur Mercanti jumps in, says, that's it. That's it. The fight is over, and Sugar Ray Leonard retains the championship against the dead game Larry Bonds. And it was the blows to the stomach, Marvin, that really made the difference in the fight. And he put, he put up a, a hell of a fight. I, uh, why, do you, why do you think people are booing at the end? Well, Larry Bond was a total underdog. I was a heavy favorite. I think they expected much more out of me because the press really didn't give Larry Bond so much of a credit. Is that the first time you've ever been booed? No, no, I've been booed all my life. <laughs> Ayeb Kalule was the man Ray Leonard was tuning up for. The 154-pound champion also fought from a southpaw stance. There was one slight difference. Kalule was right-handed. In there, Leonard is going after his body. Hey, Leonard's not... Oh, a good right hook by the man from Uganda. He's obviously using the old technique. This meant his right hook and jab were brutal. Believe it or not, Kalule people think they can outbox Leonard. There was a great right, right hand shot oh, yeah. there that was Kalule. But even at his new weight, he certainly retained his speed. He doesn't follow him in at, at all. One point. You're right. No comment. Good right hand. Both men landed big early. Ray Leonard's lead right hand pulled him ahead. Kaluli fighting back. This is the way he's got the upper body of the middleweight, but the pins are those of. Kalule would come storming back, winging both hands. Ray made the commitment to body punching. Six, and Leonard after a very bad start. Coming under right hand Kalule. Takes a good punch. Breaking the bigger man down. With the left hook, might have hurt Kalule. Kalule hit him with the left hand and did nothing. Kalule loves to fight. Until in round nine, Ray Leonard lands the showstopper. He right there. Ten seconds He's hurt right here. Got him down! The round is over. He the stopped the fight. He stopped the fight. The round is over. Leonard has won it. I'm going to end you. Was he a tough night's work? Well, Kalule once again proved the boxing career wrong. He was a very tough and durable champion. I give the guy a great deal of uh, credit. He put up a tremendous fight. And uh, I like to eat my words when I call him an advanced southpaw. The guy is truly a worthy champion. Now we come to the final fight of prime Sugar Ray Leonard. After settling back down at 147 pounds, Ray Leonard defends his title against Bruce Finch. Finch brought the fight right to him. To the ropes here against Finch and almost a let's see what you got kid kind of attitude. And a heavy puncher. We've seen Leonard knock people out with one punch. Pinned him to the ropes. Leonard started slow. Right hand again, scoring on the top of the head of uh, Finch. Thrown by Leonard, another right hand. That might have been the best punch. As Finch fight. took the first round on the scorecards. Winding down to the end of the first round. Ray Leonard gave him the fight right back. He wouldn't take the second, the third, was hardly required. The world knew it was a stay busy fight. And Finch stays up, and another right hand, and a left hand sends it backwards, and the legs are gone on Bruce Finch. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine. It's all over, it is all over, and wisely so, Bill's Lane calls a halt to things here. In the 
That fall, Ray Leonard had signed the contract to fight Aaron Pryor. I want to fight that. I want to fight Leonard because I feel like I'm the king of the junior welterweight for what I've already done. A detached retina in sparring sadly forced Sugar Ray out of fighting. While he would return, it was never with quite the same snap or viciousness Ray once possessed. But in his welterweight prime, Ray Leonard was the fastest thing you'll ever barely see.